So I'm here with Patrick Black, executive producer at DICE. First off, I just want to say thank you for allowing me to interview you like this. I wanted to start off with um, a pretty simple question. What are you most proud of about BF4? That's, well, if I would pick one thing that I'm proud of is the, the whole team effort of just bringing this game together. It's, it's the biggest battle game we've ever built. It's the most complete battle game we've ever built. And it, I would argue it's the most balanced and high quality battle game we've ever built. So I'm very proud of the fact that we're pulling this together and turning it into this great product. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's another team in the world that can, could have done this. So the, just the overall scale and scope of, of the game yeah, itself. It, uh, yeah, having a team that is actually, actually you know, capable of doing this, I think it's, it's magic. Okay, that's good. Um, something I, I get asked a lot on, on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, has the netcode been improved for, very much for BF4? Um, in BF3, there's lots of criticism, players dying around corners, behind mm. cover. Mm. Uh, what have you guys done to improve the netcode in BF4? We actually done quite a lot to do that, but I think it's important also for people to understand that the net code, you can never have a game like Battlefield with the you know, complexity of you know amount of players, vehicles, uh, bullet trajectories, destruction, etc., etc., and have a perfect net code that is 100% perfect because there's too many things going on. So in, in our world, we're improving it and trying to make it as good as possible. But there's a reason why there aren't any other games on the market that does what we're doing, because it's really, really, really hard to do that. Um, that aside, we are looking at ways of improving net codes by, you know, how do you prioritize things? How do you make things feel snapper and, and, and tighter? And I think when people are playing Battlefield 4, comparing it to other Battlefield titles, you know, all Battlefield titles, they will notice that there's a there's a difference in the net code uh, where it's actually snappier and faster than it's been before. Okay, excellent. Um, another thing that people ask me is about the commander mode. Mm -hmm. So, say you're on a server and you've got a really bad commander. Yes. Will the players in the game have the option to call a mutiny against that commander and kick, kick them out of the game? Of course. Yeah. And there's a mutiny function where players can actually vote kick uh, the, the bad commanders. Um, and also you can actually see on the commander persistence how good of a commander that person is. So to us it's very important that the commander cannot screw with the game uh, and make the game less um, for the people on the ground. So intentionally try and ruin the game or yeah, annoy if people? You, if you ruin the game or you're just that bad, mm. which I hope people aren't, <laughs> um, they will be, have the, uh, the ability to kick that commander out. Okay. Another important focus uh, in the community, anyway, for BF4. Obviously, with competitive esports, um, everyone wants it to be a feature in BF4. Um, well, not everyone, but there's a there's a large population of Battlefield players who are interested in esports and mm. competition. Mm. One thing that plagued esports in BF3, especially with live streams, is um, privacy and um, DDoS attacks. So. Mm. Um, on battle log, you can very easily find out what server someone's playing on, yeah. get the IP. Have any steps been taken to prevent that for BF4? Uh, not really in, in that way. We, we want people to, to you know, use battle log in a, in a wise way, of course, making sure that you, know, you share the right information with the right people. Uh, the, the battle log team is working constantly with you know, uh, improving things like that. Uh, we haven't noticed, you know, from a you know, bulk of, of the players having problems with this. But to your point, people wanting to play more competitive, uh, this is of course very important. You know, being able to lock servers, being able to keep people out of ruining your experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, so we've heard about the high value target mechanic in the game. Can you go into more detail about how, how that works? Uh, how many kills does a player need to get before the commander has the option to mark them as a high value target? Do you think it's going to ruin the happy fun time of really good players if they're always being marked as high value target? And can you go into more detail about that? Well, in general, the high value target feature, you know, giving the commander the ability to point out people is, I think, is a very very cool feature. Mm -hmm. um, not all commanders will use it at all times, of course, but there will be an option for for commanders to do this. Uh, 
I think in general it's a very positive thing because you as the high value target also feel very important and you know that you have to defend yourself against you know, the other team uh, that really wants to take you out. And I think if you don't like this feature at all, you should probably not join servers with commanders because we want this to be a commander feature uh, at its core uh, and we think it's very, very important. The actual no exact numbers that we're tweaking right now is not set, uh, but we will make sure that it's a, it's a good, nice number for, for uh, the commander too. Okay, so notice you said service without commanders there. So is that going to be a server side option to disable commanders? Yes, absolutely. Like okay. many other things. That's pretty cool. Um, so what other things server side can we disable? Like, can we disable like the sound auto triggers, for example? Mm. So if someone throws a grenade next to me, my character will shout out, oh shit, it's a grenade. And that's mm. going to give my position away. Mm. I haven't really done anything wrong. Again, mm. this is more of a competitive thing. Mm. Are we going to be able to see that level of customization for the service, or is it just things like ticket count, respawn time, same as BF3? Uh, it will be similar to BF3, but we're also extending it. Uh, the, the feature you just mentioned on, on you know, um, you know, voice feedback on, on different actions will not be a server setting as it is right now, but if people feel like it's a problem, we should definitely look into it. Uh, we don't want to bloat the server settings too much, so it's like an infinite list of features. But still, if there's something that will ruin the game, of course, we need to look into it. Okay. And uh, I think Lars uh, spoke about the classic Battlefield preset. So yes. you're going to be able to have that as a filter in Battlelog. So yes. um, you can avoid all those crazy 1,000 ticket servers and 10-second yes. respawn vehicle time. I think that's a really nice feature, and I'm uh, quite happy that you've added that, along with a lot of other people. You yeah. know, Because a lot of the times on BF3, you're you're looking for a... A server and it's yeah. got these goofy rules and mm -hmm. it's not the core battlefield experience no. that you want so yeah we thank want, you we want like official official servers that you know we can even if you have your own server you can set it as an official um, server so all the settings are dice approved more or less and and i think uh, you got that problem with battlefield 3 where people had crazy servers and people thought they joined just a normal game and they ended up in a ten thousand ticket server okay <laughs> So, um, in one of the latest battle log, battle blog posts, sorry, because yeah. I know you guys are doing like updates sometimes every two or three days mm -hmm. now. Uh, we saw some, like a commander view of a, a new map, mm -hmm. and I think it was the map with the with the dam or some sort of a dam. Mm -hmm. uh, we also saw a submarine icon on there. Can you talk about that? Is that is that just something the commander can call in that? fires missiles or is that going to be like a player controlled submarine people can spawn in? Well the submarine I wouldn't go too much into detail on uh, there's there's no plans on having like submarines on the maps uh, okay. in the vanilla game uh, but it's true that we have a map that uh, might or might not have a dam in it. Yeah <laughs> we saw in the Levolution trailer when yeah. it explodes and then the yeah. war comes through. Um, okay so w during the development of BF4 was there one feature in particular that took the most time and effort to implement to get it just how you, how you wanted it to be? I think there's quite a few features in the game that we spent a lot of time. You know, we might when you start, you know, designing the game, we might think it's oh this is easy and it, how hard can it be? And then when you start to implement it, you start to iterate and find that if you really want this, we need to keep working at it. I think Levelu the evolution concept started as a very small thing and it has been growing. Uh, during the development and if we would have planned for it from the start we would probably have to cut it because it's so, such a big thing yeah. um, and to us it's, it's important that the, the implementation of the concept is, is very thorough uh, making sure that it actually changes the way you play the game dynamically uh, over the course of the match mm -hmm. uh, and also having the full scale and the, the range of actions from the very, very small things to everything from car alarms to metal detectors to the big things like weather changes and the, the epic uh, events that, you know, boats crashing in or um, skyscrapers crumbling. So it's, to us, it's, I think the Levolution concept uh, started small and it turned really, really big. Mm, okay. So um, I know you mentioned the dynamic weather there. Mm. Are we going to see dynamic weather on all the maps? Is it going to be a server-side option you can disable, enable? Uh, it won't have uh, dynamic weather on all maps, but there will be different weather changes. The ex one example is, of course, Siege of Shanghai, 
where you don't really change the weather in itself, but you actually change the environment by you know, creating this dust cloud. So weather changes can be um, you know, natural weather changes, but also um, be more you know, man-caused, so to speak. Yeah, I like the way in, uh, in, in the Shanghai level, you know, after the skyscraper falls yeah. down, uh, it's much harder to fly around because yeah. you know, there's all the smoke in yeah. there. And it really does change up the, the dynamic of the yeah. game. It's really cool. So um, obviously with the build at Gamescom, um, people were allowed to record and capture mm -hmm. footage. And naturally, everyone went through all of the customization options, yeah. looking at all the attachments, all the mm -hmm. guns. For release, is everything we saw in the Gamescom build what we're going to see on release? Or is there more stuff for the initial release of the game? Obviously, with DLC, you guys might introduce more weapons. Yeah. But what we saw at Gamescom, is that all we can expect? I think I think we had everything turned on, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, of course, you know, this is what you get when you've been unlocking everything. Mm. And you know, there are several paths of unlocking things in the game. Uh, but in general, I think more or less everything was turned on. OK. Cool. But I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure uh, since it was kind of a special build before Gamescom. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back to BF3 again. Mm -hmm. Another little criticism of the game was the uh, the patches and the updates. Yes. Uh, so there were a few, I wouldn't say game breaking, but annoying bugs and yep. glitches like the M26 dart. Yes. And it was a few months before that was fixed. Mm. Um, with the new politics from Sony and Microsoft on updates, are we going to see faster yes. patches and updates for BF4? Yeah, there are two things that, that will be very different for Battlefield 4. One is, of course, the, the policy changes from first party, where it's easier for us to hand out a patch to players uh, more or less immediately. In some cases, it will take time because you still need to go through certification and, and getting approvals. So, you know, you want the first party that kind of prevents you from breaking the game. So, it, of course, it won't be always overnight, but in some cases it will. Um, and the other thing that we're doing is that we're actually moving uh, some of the information of the game to the server side, which means that we have control over the servers, which means that we can update the servers on more or less a daily or a weekly uh, cadence if we want to, which means that you get another way for us to update the game. So I, I'm, I'm hoping that we won't see any of those problems uh, again in the future. That's very good news because I think that was a big um, a big want from yes. the Battlefield community for yes. BF4. So um, I'm going to ask you about Battle Recorder rather than the Spectator mm. Mode. Obviously you put the Spectator yes. Mode in and having used it today mm -hmm. and having seen it already I think you guys did a fantastic job with it. Um, in terms of a recorder that records the game, is, is that something that you're considering implementing or um, is it just a, a technical issue where you can't have it in the game? Have you considered like just a POV recorder like they have mm. in Counter-Strike so mm. you could record just your point of view? Is that something that's on the radar for DICE for BF4? Well, in general, we've been discussing this for quite a long time. The problem with recorders is that there's always a better recorder on the market. If we build one, there's people will still use their own favorite recorder, especially on PC where you have loads of options. So what we did when we designed the spectate mode was that we wanted to allow for people to use any recorder, uh, but us uh, giving you the spectate mode where you can, you know, if you want to hide all the UI for the spectator and just use the controls or the keyboard and mouse to toggle all the, um, all the camera views, etc. Uh, and the other thing is that on the Gen 4 consoles, they actually have built-in recorders. So there's no point for us to build a recorder on top of the recorder mm -hmm. because the recorder will be so integrated into the next-gen consoles uh, so that what we want to provide is the, it's a great spectator mode to use with that recorder. Obviously, we've seen the, the, the smoke clouds from the skyscraper in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. We've seen the, the storm on Paracel Storm. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about what other environmental effects we're going to see? Are they going to be blizzards? Tsunamis, volcanoes, can you go into detail about that? Well, I won't, don't want to spoil all of it, but I can mention some of the things that you have seen you know, traces of in, in the, the Levolution trailer that we released. Uh, on one map you will actually be able to you know, take down a levee, which will actually flood the map, you know, increasing the, the water levels with several meters, going from a map where you can actually drive around with tanks on the ground to a map where 
that then turns into water and you have to use boats and, and different amphibious vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, we also have the dam example where you actually you know, take down the dam, um, you, you create another dust cloud, uh, much like in city of Shanghai, um, you know, changing the environment. Uh, there are different things on different maps. Um, and of course, it's not only about these epic events, but also about the smaller events uh, where you have everything from birds flying out of bushes to, uh, we mentioned car alarms, fire extinguishers they can shoot. You can take down generators uh, that will you know, black out a building, for instance. Mm -hmm. So there's several things on, on all of these maps that we're uh, doing uh, that has a very dynamic and, and powerful change on the maps. Okay, I look forward to seeing some, some of the surprises. Uh, so, in the Gamescom and E3 build, a lot of the dialogue for the characters mm -hmm. seemed um, recycled and some people say, well, it's because they're still making the game. Mm. For BF4, are we going to see fresh dialogue for the soldiers in the game when they call out and stuff? Yes, more or less all of the voices have been re-recorded, uh, both from a, uh, we want to up the quality of, of the voices, but also from a, uh, you know, adding the Chinese army, we also remodeled uh, completely uh, the, the characters for all classes in all armies. So that meant that we wanted a fresh start as well. Um, I think we are reusing some lines that are iconic from BF3, uh, but most of it is, is actually redone. Are we going to see an enemy boat spotted from BF2? Is that going to be in there? <laughs> um, I can't answer that. Okay, <laughs> right, fair <laughs> enough. When people talk about dinosaurs, <laughs> yes. do you take that seriously? Um, both you... yes and no. I think the, the dinosaur discussion is a bit... Uh, it, it's interesting, but again, you know, we, we are focusing on building Battle 4 uh, as the game uh, we are presenting. Uh, it's supposed to be a first-person modern military shooter. Um, you know, as a priority, and then you know, you never, you never know what happens. Okay, cool. So, character customization in the game. From what we saw uh, at the in the Gamescom build, um, in the background of the customization, mm -hmm. there were uh, little hip t uh, tips and hints about decals um, mm -hmm. that you can put yes. on your. I mean, are you going to be able to put those on guns? Characters, yes. can you go into more detail about yes. that? Yes, so you have the emblem system as we call it and the emblems is something we, we partially had in Battle 3 when you created the emblems for your clans. Um, and the, the interesting thing here is that we're actually taking that idea and bringing it into the actual game. So you can create your own emblem and that will then be placed on you as a soldier, different places on uh, depending on what class and what army you're, you're playing as. Uh, but also placed on your gun and on top of that, we're also placing on the vehicle that you get into, which means that you will actually be seen and, and recognized on the battlefield with your uh, emblem that you created yourself. That's really cool. So yeah. if, you, if you've got like a rival in the game and uh, you want to go after his helicopter or something, yeah. you could just target that intentionally. <laughs> um, okay, so this one's a bit, a bit technical. With, uh, with uh, mouse sensitivities in mm -hmm. the game, a lot of people are asking for a separate aim down the sight sensitivity. So obviously you can change your base sensitivity when you move mm. the mouse. Okay. Um, people are saying, are, are we going to get a slider for ADS as well? So when you aim it down the sight. Um, it's not planned right now, yeah. but you know, if people really want it and they think it's very, very necessary, I think we should look into the, the option of doing it, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, in general, mouse sensitivity is quite complicated since your PC and your OS has its own mouse sensitivity and then on top of that you have your uh, game mouse sensitivity. So to us it's it's very delicate balance of getting you know the mouse sensitivity right. Most people seem to be happy with what we have today but on top of that what you're mentioning should be looked into I think. Mm. It's a feature they have in um, Planetside 2 mm. and uh, it was quite warmly received because mm -hmm. uh, uh, for some reason people are crazy about mouse sensitivity yeah. and tweaking mm -hmm. it perfectly. I'm one of those guys. Mm -hmm. So um, so can you talk about what are the theatres of war we're going to see? So in BF3 we had Iran, Paris, the Middle East. Mm. In BF4 obviously we've got China. Anywhere else in the world that we're going? Can you? Go well we are, we are in that region of the world. So it's China, Russia, uh, that area. But again I don't want to go into yeah. too much detail. But China, Russia is of course 
part of, of uh, the, the theaters. Okay. Um, a lot of the assignments in BF3 mm -hmm. seemed very unfun. Um, I, I, like the ones that are like, get 500 kills with a PP-19, mm. like it's a terrible weapon. Um, and uh, you end up just grinding a lot on yeah. Team Deathmatch servers so you can get all the assignments. Mm. Have you thought about fun and interesting ways to make the assignments in BF4 a bit more um, enjoyable? Well, in general for the entire game we are looking at like how can we make it more fun? That's kind of the motto for the entire game. If it's not fun then we're doing something wrong. Uh, the idea for Battlefield 3 was of course to uh, not uh, have people not have fun, but in general um, maybe in some cases help people try out different things. And of course that's something we're doing now as well, but uh, the example you brought up is of course not something we want to you know, copy in, in Battlefield 4. Yeah. So it could be something like um, knife five recons that are prone or something like that you know it's just a bit more interesting yeah. than just get so many kills with this weapon yeah. i'm sure you've got plenty of ideas <laughs> we have some ideas yes yeah. that's <laughs> excellent um so in the frostbite 3 features video uh where it's talking about the wind and the mm -hmm. dynamic weather and uh, there's one point where it says the the wind in frostbite 3 can affect affect every single object in the game mm. so when a when a storm kicks up on paracel mm -hmm. storm is that going to affect unguided rockets or long-range shooting or even helicopters are they gonna be pushed around a little bit by the wind? Well in theory you, we could do that but we actually um, it's always, always a delicate balance between like realism and fun. Um, we, we have not implemented so that like bullets or helicopters will actually be affected by uh, the wind because people don't really understand what's going on because you're shooting down the site and the bullet doesn't end up where you want it to be. And then it's all about ed you know, educating people that, oh, it's because of the wind and you need wind meters and they need compensation for wind, etc., etc. So we actually remove that part of, of that system. Uh, but in general, we, want, we wanted the wind system to be more of a graphical thing. Uh, we also tried um, you know, moving characters slightly, so disturbing the character movement based on the wind, but not much fun to be mm. honest. Um, so in general it's more about the, the, the environment than the actual players. Okay, so I guess you say there um, it's almost a bit too over complicated if you start putting yes. things like that down. People would be shooting and be like why well, I'm aiming directly at the guy yeah. but my bullets are going over here. Yeah, you, it's, not it, fun. It, it's really hard and then it's depending on angle and then the wind system, of course, have gusts in it, so it's not constant wind, which means that how do you calculate a wind that is not constant? Mm. Uh, so it, it makes it even more complicated. So we, again, we, our goal is to focus on the fun. Okay, cool. Um, I think we should start wrapping up now. Uh, one final question. Could you describe BF4 in three words? Um, I would probably use dynamic as one word because it's probably the most dynamic game that we've ever built. Uh, epic, looking at the, how big um, the, the, the game world is, uh, how many players you can be at the same, in the same area and having this massive all-out war feeling. And then I think fun is the last word because if the game is not fun it doesn't matter what we're building. Uh, and to me we are proving again that you know it, we can actually make an even more fun Battlefield game with Battlefield 4. Excellent, I think that was a very good answer. Dynamic, epic and fun. Yes, that's great. That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank Cheers. you. Thanks. Yeah.